Today on Hustle & Pro, we're talking to Matt Wixon. He's the facilitator for Athletics Communication Department at Frisco ISD. He's also a sports, or was also a sports writer. We're going to talk about that. Uh, first, we're going to jump in with our quick hits to get to know Matt. First of all, welcome, Matt. Thanks Thank for, you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Now, you sit in on some of these with some of our FISD student athletes, so I now do. we get to talk to you. Yep. I'm glad to have you. Okay, who is your favorite all-time athlete? This is going to be obscure um, and show my age, but Walter Davis, he was a Phoenix Suns basketball player. I loved him, and I think it's because, you know, first impressions, I was like six years old, and he was the star of the Phoenix Suns. I loved basketball. Um, I certainly love more contemporary or, um, you know, I like a lot of athletes now, but if you ask me my very favorite, I mean, he was my first little childhood crush. Okay. I got to meet him and, and that was it. You're going to be the only one that ever gives that answer, right? I'm pretty uh, well, sure. I, I hope so. I want to meet the person who gives that answer. The other right. Um, so then who's your favorite all-time team? All-time team is, uh, well, you know, I've been in Texas here now for 20 years. I really love the Rangers. I love baseball, but um, still Phoenix Suns growing up. I was a basketball junkie mm -hmm. back then. And I thought I was going to be an NBA player, and I, I was never even close to that. But um, so I love the Phoenix Suns. What about uh, which one of those is your favorite sport to watch then? Baseball uh, or basketball? Probably baseball now, because that's partly because my sons are so into baseball, and okay. I've gotten into that. Um, and then when you say what's your favorite sport to play? Mm -hmm. uh, now, you know, as I'm getting old and creaky need, mm -hmm. uh, probably tennis. Okay. Um, I love tennis but I still love to go out and play some pickup basketball once in a while. I just can't quite do the same things I used to be able to do. Right, I hear so. you. What about the farthest distance you have traveled to watch sports or to play sports? Um, to play sports, you know, I traveled around. When I was a kid, I didn't travel that much. It was kind of a different time. You know, we, we played, uh, played a lot, but it was all close by. With my sons, I've been in, you know, Colorado, and uh, uh, we were just in Omaha, Nebraska for the College World Series and um, uh, places like that. Those have been, haven't gotten anywhere like out of the United States or any, anything international, but um, maybe someday. Me either. Um, okay, so let's talk about you as an athlete. I know you just talked about, um, you thought you were gonna be an NBA player, so <laughs> <laughs> I know you've covered sports, but I want to hear you as an athlete and growing mm -hmm. up and, or what do you still play? You said tennis? What right, else? yeah, I still love to play tennis. Um, growing up, I loved to play pretty much everything. Um, I did come from a family who didn't really want me to play tackle football, that, you know, and I know there's some feelings about that now. Back, back in the time, they wouldn't, I still play flag football and everything like that. Part of the reason was I was very small. I'm now six foot two, but um, I was very small. I grew very late. But um, I loved baseball, basketball, even played tennis back then. Um, I mentioned I thought I was going to be an NBA player, which was, I really am joking. <laughs> no, I was never close to that. Um, so basketball wasn't like a main sport when you were, it, you know, for it, you. It, no, it was. Um, but I always knew I wasn't going to be good enough. I was just not a good enough athlete. When I was this growth spurt? Uh, it was like junior year in high school. Oh, okay. So yeah. You, yeah. The other thing is I graduated from high school when I was 17. My parents pushed me forward really early, and so I was always at a disadvantage, at least physically. But, um, and then baseball, I, I'm left-handed. So my dad had me pegged as, you know, big star pitcher, and I was yeah. a, a pretty good pitcher. But then um, I had to have elbow surgery when I was 15. I'm showing I have a nice zipper on my left elbow um, where they had to reconstruct the growth plate on my elbow. It broke apart when I was throwing a curveball. And uh, I came back and played baseball for a little bit. But as part of my rehab, rehab for it, they had me playing tennis. And I became a better tennis player than a baseball player. Wow, and so that's interesting. It, you know, and, and I kind of fell in love with tennis, and they're, they're the same season, both in spring, and so I had to make the choice, and I decided to play tennis, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I still love baseball, my kids love baseball, but, but tennis has really kind of become my lifetime sport. Okay. So that moment, you, it was an injury, like a moment that you felt it? Like yep. I, or break. I, um, I've never heard anybody say they broke their growth plate in their elbow. No, or, I know. You know. It's, it's, uh, yeah, and it's, it's not a real common injury. People yeah. will have growth plate injuries where they can damage it a little sure. bit. But I actually was throwing a curveball, and as I followed through, and again, this was before I grew, as a lesson to all those parents out there, my, yeah. my growth plate, there was a lot of space in it, and uh, I felt my arm go numb. I lost m most of the range of motion, and uh, the next day they, I went to the doctor with my dad, he was probably more upset than me because he was the one who was, had me throwing curveballs. Uh, 
But, uh, and then they, they, so I had to have surgery where they put it back together with pins. Um, wow. And I was like in, in the hospital for about three days. Things are probably medically done a little bit better now. Yeah, but it's, I mean, flashback a few episodes ago of this podcast uh, was, that's what the discussion was, was how prevalent baseball elbow injuries right. are for younger and younger boys right now. Yeah. They're th- they could be throwing too much too early. Mm-hmm. Their body, similarly to tackle football, their body's really not strong enough yet to right. withstand that. Yeah. And after the fatigue and the different, you know, poor technique, it breaks down that elbow. Yeah, and the difficult thing too is that, you know, they try to say when is an age you should be doing these different things. Like I have a, f- uh, my middle son just turned 14. He has not thrown a curveball yet. I won't let him. Um, I won't teach him it. And, uh, but he's a pitcher. But he's a pitcher. And so he, he does change ups and moves the ball around. But he has teammates who are the same age as him, but they have grown. They are big. And I, I wouldn't say to their parents, oh, you should, really shouldn't, you know, I'm not going to make yeah. a judgment for somebody You're else. Not that guy. He looks, some of his teammates look like almost like, you know, grown men yeah. or they're teenagers. Cooper, mine, no. He looks like little Cooper still. Um, he doesn't get to use the, the curveball. He's not throwing yet. curve. Now he's yeah. got to throw, change his speeds, and move the ball around, which is important, too. I mean, it's better. Maybe it's better for him to master those. Hopefully long-term it those is. Those are his pitches. Yeah. That's interesting. So you have three boys. Mm-hmm. Do they all play baseball? No. Um, so my oldest is 16. He is going to be a junior at Liberty High School, Frisco. Uh, Cooper, who I mentioned, he just turned 14. He's going to be a freshman at Liberty. And then uh, Nathan... My youngest um, is 11, and he's going to be a sixth grader at Fowler, so, he, so he'll be going to middle school for the first time. The two youngest ones mm-hmm. are big time, well, in their minds, big time baseball players. They mm-hmm. play select travel baseball, and, and I think they're you know really good players, and I love that they love baseball. And then my oldest son, he has basically said no to athletics. Um, he, he's in the band, and he has his own thing. And it's been a crash course for me because he is into esports. And a couple of weeks ago, he went to a national tournament with his team, Euphoria. Yes, they have esports teams. Mm-hmm. And uh, competing in a, in a game called Splatoon for the Nintendo Switch. And I got to go with us because I have to. He's You're only six. He's esports <laughs> parent. <laughs> yeah, I'm an esports parent, too. I and, didn't uh, know that. I admit, I didn't always know what was going on in the game. Yeah. The stuff that was going on. But I loved like seeing the reaction of the crowd and um, people just whooping it up and, and seeing him with it's his cool. teammates. It was fun. I'm glad that, yeah, I mean, that was last week's episode of this was eSports and yeah. it's an, it's different, of course, but it's, it's exciting and it's cool to see the engagement and how intimate. Right. And there are similarities. I mean, the, you know, sure. the intensity and the competitiveness and the camaraderie and, and you know, teamwork. teamwork. I think it's great, you know, find your thing and if your thing, you know, this is another competitive outlet mm-hmm. for those people. So yeah, I think it's great. For sure. Okay, let's switch gears. I want to know, um, you were a sports writer, so what all did you cover? What was your beat when you were? Well, mostly, um, yeah, I was a sports writer for 24 years, and for most of that time, I did high schools, because most of my time was here in uh, Dal- or in the Dallas area. I was at the Dallas Morning News mm-hmm. for 18 years. Um, so I was the high school columnist for the Morning News, but over my career, I did Super Bowl, NBA Finals, NCAA Final Four, college football, my, the, really the only big thing that I didn't get to do that I wanted to do was the Olympics because um, there was never really an Olympics nearby. Yeah, it's hard to just fall upon. You but, know? Um, so were you always working for the media side or were you ever on a team? Side? Nope, nope. I was always on always the media, on the media side. side. Yep. Um, I had my first job out of the University of Arizona where I went to school and got a journalism degree was at the Arizona Daily Sun, this little uh, daily newspaper in mm-hmm. Flagstaff, Arizona up in the mountains. And that kind of started everything. I was, so I was a sports writer. And I, and I loved it, and uh, I've, I've always loved to be able to be part of sports and yeah. everything like that. Yeah, I hear you. Who was your best interview or most uh, interview you were most excited to get? Well, um, you know, I talked to Charles Barkley back again. I mentioned I was a Phoenix Suns fan. This is when he was with the Suns, yeah. and I was just getting into the business. He's awesome, and, right? Yeah, well, and yeah. It's always entertaining. Yeah. Um, a little scary, a little oh, intimidating sure. to like a 22-year-old oh, back then. Oh, I'd be then. terrified, but, but he's um, hilarious. But he was really fun. Him, yeah. Yeah, and then I think later on, you know, when I got lots of opportunities with um, the Dallas Morning News, the best ones were like Dirk, Mm -hmm. Dirk Nowitzki, just because everything you hear about him is true. He's just like the most humble, you know, out there guy who he's just like, you just walk around a corner, he'll just put out his hand like, hey, I'm Dirk, and just start talking. You're Dirk right now, too. Yeah. You uh, enjoyed all of the 
accolades and send off he's gotten this year. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. He, he deserves all that. So as you shifted from the media side over to um, FISD, like what's been kind of the most, the biggest learning curve or the most surprise as you're now in the high school athletics side of it, perspective of it? Right. Well, I think the biggest thing, because I'm in Frisco ISD and we have 10 high schools, is just the volume of everything <laughs> and that there's such a appetite for, um, you know, information and attention and, and promotion of our, of our teams. And that's not from the district necessarily saying that. It's, it's from, you know, fans and parents. You know, please give us more attention and things like that, which I understand. I have, I have kids. I want my kids to get attention too. Yeah. But um, I love it. I love, you know, when we moved here, Back in 1999, Frisco had one, one high school in the school district, and we didn't have any kids, but we've been in the district this whole time, and I never thought I'd work for the school district, but it has worked out, and um, I love the school district, and I love all the things I get to do for it. Yeah, you moved here uh, probably because the market, in the Dallas market is so strong in right. sports, but then Frisco bloomed and yes. became a, a different business opportunity or career opportunity for People you. People still will say, so what does Frisco have like five or six high schools now? You know, who aren't from right around here? I'm like, no, we have 10. And they're like, what? Yeah. But uh, it's been fast. And uh, so and now still 10 growing. high schools and two more coming in, still a, in a couple going. of years. Yep. So I uh, got to experience signing day for Frisco ISD this, this school year. And I was blown away, you know, over 100 kids, right, that were there. Yep. And there's been even more. Of our signs, yeah, that, later. Right? Yep. So did you, maybe you already knew going into it with your work in high school sports, but is, is that common or are we, you know, over the average? Surely that's right. not common well, in a market like this. Yeah, we're above average. We're not, we don't have the most concentrated either. You know, I wouldn't say that we're the, the best. We are a large district, but we, Frisco ISD has a lot of really good athletes, a lot of great coaches, a lot of supportive parents and communities. And, you know, I mentioned select baseball mm -hmm. and, and volleyball. These kids, who, if you really love a sport, you're going to have all your opportunities here and opportunities to get better. And I think that shows on the signing day with that many kids signing. Right. Do you see, you talked about, you know, maybe parents wanting the attention. I mean, um, do you feel like, is, I feel like there's so many parents around here that go into their children's, you know, sports and athletic career go as they go into even like eighth, ninth, tenth, thinking, assuming, really thinking it's <laughs> realistic that they will get a college scholarship and they'll be set, right? Yeah. Is, I mean, do you... Well, it's a, and it's a misnomer for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to go overboard with and gush about your own child and to, th and to think that they're going to do all those things. Um, but there are a limited amount of scholarships and a lot of kids out there. And I, th I think as I talk to, to parents, and I don't want to be like this person giving out these, all this advice or whatever, but um, you have to make it, you certainly don't want to say this is a financial investment when you're putting your kids in these special things because it's probably not Some going to pay off. Some people do, they justify that. Right? Some people do. Sure. It's probably not going to pay off. Um, you know, the odds are. I mean, sometimes you see a kid who's like in sixth grade and you're like, he or she isn't a wonderful athlete and they're going somewhere. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it's not that way. You, you don't know how it's going to turn out and so you want your kid to really enjoy it. And that's why I pay for it for my kids. If they love the sport or they love the activity, I will pay for it. Yeah. Do you but guys have in your family, you know, what's, what's the end goal in your family? Is it uh, continue to play that sport you love mm -hmm. through high school and that's, make those teams? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, when um, Cooper and Nathan, when they started doing baseball and they, and they loved it and wanted to keep doing it, my goal was you know, if they want to keep, if they love it, even if I didn't think they had a chance to play in high school, they're like, hey, it's fine, you know, play now, we'll pay for it. But, but basically the goal was to get them to high school, play on a high school baseball team because they'll have lots of fun doing that and have all those, the social benefits Be and team. teamwork. Yeah. yeah. And then if something happens beyond then, it's gravy. Because yep. you mentioned scholarships, uh, a lot of baseball and softball parents don't know that those are not, you don't get full ride scholarships for those sports. They're yeah. all divided up with these, uh, with these colleges, so it's a bit of a wake-up call. If you're paying ten thousand a year for select baseball, yeah, it's not coming back. You're not getting the money back. Yeah. So, with, with that being said, when you're at, when you're talking about a signing day with hundred kids, right? Mm -hmm. What's what's the ratio of kids in that room that are getting scholarships versus just getting to go play a sport at that school? Are all those kids getting scholarships? I think most of them, the vast majority, are getting some partial. Partial, uh -huh. right? Football player, the the sports that they call headcount sports 
for boys are football and basketball. So if you get a football or basketball scholarship to Division One, it's a full ride. Okay. For girls, it's uh, basketball, volleyball, oh. and I, I don't think I'm missing one. I think the softball, the, the, you said no. No, and, and like soccer, Maybe. swimming. Those are those are partials as well. Okay. But um, the good thing is track. This Golf. track. Well, those are all partials too. <laughs> But the, uh, the good thing is with these sports is I tell people too, um, when I drop the bomb on them sort of and they say, you're not gonna get a full ride. But if you are a, a good athlete who a school wants you for their sports program, they will open up opportunities to find academic scholarships for you. Right. And sometimes it'll open a door for you if you wanna go to some kind of institution like a Stanford or an Ivy League school. Mm -hmm. It's a can, bargaining chip. It's a bargaining chip, yeah, yeah, because you've got that athletic, you know, that coach who want you on there and they're going to make some things happen. Yeah, it's a for skill it. that they're recruiting for. Might not right. be recruiting. They can't they can't give you that scholarship cuz like you said they're limited. They can't right. just give everybody everything in every sport. Right. They're And it's they and it's a to. great way to be well-rounded just like band is and you know model UN or debate or arts and theater and all that. Um, you know kind of find your thing. Okay, I want to ask you about you talked about football, tackle football, and your growing up, your family wasn't a tackle football family. You right. Maybe watched it, right? My younger brother but, ended up playing because he, okay. he he barked okay. <laughs> so he, much. Okay, he won that fight. Yeah. Um, and I know that you have even written about this world of high school football mm -hmm. and and concussions, and I'm fascinated by the topic of tackle and concussions. And are we? Well, it got, to me, it's not a question of are kids tackling too early. It's that they are and. Mm -hmm the side effects long term that, that happens just sort of in the big big picture when we talk about like the NFL and all the things that have happened mm -hmm. are they do you personally think they're going down the right path are they taking the right steps well I think that the instruction level and the knowledge level and you know preventing concussions and proper tackling has has gone through the roof in the last five years now you have to find people who are accepting of that you know the, the instruction like Frisco ISD they are all about that I mean it's it's safety first on all these kind of things um, I think it's every parent's deci decision whether they want their kids to go into tackle football before, um, you know, like middle, middle school. school. Because you may have a great coach of your 10-year-old team who is all into safety, and there are people who can provide medical treatment on the sidelines. Um, if that's the case and you want your son to play, okay. Mm -hmm. But I think in the vast majority, and if you talk to like high school coaches, they don't want their kids playing that young. Football, yeah, absolutely. Play flag football, learn a lot of the, ability, the skills in that. But until you get to middle school, where at least in Frisco ISD, we have trainers available all yeah. the time. All these coaches have to go through all the certification and training. That's when I would feel comfortable with my sons playing football mm -hmm. because I know that they're being looked at and they're being watched there. Mm -hmm. Big picture with football, I think football has a lot of challenges that it's gonna have to overcome um, just because you know there are parents who are leery about having their kids play football. I think in a lot of ways, it's safer than it has ever been because people ignored concussions 10 to 20 years ago, sure. further, yeah. um, and, and you know, heat-related. Yes, exactly. So the the knowledge level and the awareness is at a, a level that it's never been. But at the same time, I do hear from parents when they're talking to me, and um, and I can understand, you know, the kids are bigger and more physical than ever. The sport is faster. Mm -hmm. They're athletes, so we have to do more things to protect them because Football is a sport of, you know, it's hits, you know, it's okay. collisions. Yeah. And so uh, those kind of things happen. You try to make them as safe as possible. I would, I would really hate to see that any, you know, that football would just would wither because people wouldn't play it out of, out of safety. Do you think there's enough concern in parents? I mean, so there's just so many people that mm -hmm. don't, that aren't there yet. I mean, I can't imagine the percentage of, of concern for future football players is big enough yet to really impact the, no, the power of that sport I don't or the think popularity of that sport. The majority, like here in Texas, I definitely don't think so. It's, it's not going to put much of a dent in it because if you look at the numbers, the popularity is still huge here. And, um, for and tackle? For even, tackle yeah. football, yeah. Um, even, you know, I don't know about the youth numbers because I haven't seen them lately, but like our high school participation numbers are still way up there mm -hmm. um, because it's such a part of our culture. Mm -hmm. And it really is an important, or can be an important thing for a kid, you know. I mean, you don't have to play football. You don't have to play, you don't have to do band. You don't, don't have to do all these other things. But football could be the, your thing. And if it is your thing, then it is, really is important to you. You know, you learn life skills and teamwork and all those sure. kind of things. And I would hate for that not to be available to some kids who, you know, not everybody can play baseball. Maybe not everybody's going to do band or right. is interested in theater. Well, Fo and every sport has its risks. Sure. I mean, there's... 
none of the ones you mentioned. I mean, I don't know bands risk, okay? But there's a there's something that can happen to you playing right. anything in any group that you're in. Yeah. Well, and, it and might I, not be as severe as you know getting hit over and over and over again if you're yeah. like a lineman or whatever. But there's you know you and can get hurt we, doing anything. And we're going to hear about you know the the really sad things that are going to happen occasionally. And it's not just football, we hear them in other sports, but it's hard for football to shake that sometimes, but the numbers are still really, really low. And if you're talking about, you can have a safe childhood still without, um, you know, without being able to play football. Yeah. We, we, we are safer about everything in life right now. I remember yeah. growing up, we would roll around in the back of my parents' station wagon. There were no seat belts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Road trip, back, <laughs> it, back window. It was stuff. crazy. Yeah, I mean, we are. And the technology that's in the gear, and yes. there's so many things monitoring players Helmets are so now. much better. Yeah, it's I mean, there, there's so many layers built in, but um, still it just gets me the repetitive nature of being hit right. in, in the head of all things. Mm -hmm. But like you said, popularity-wise, uh, we were involved with the FFL for five years, and just seeing... What I, from my perspective, I've seen several families choose the air assault route and stay flag for way longer now right. than than they did when we were when we started in kinder. Mm -hmm. And and from my, I think that's great, positive. Like give them those skills. I think it's fun to watch kids without helmets be able to throw and run and catch faster, and it moves. It's and you know what? It's you know, it's more, more fun for kids, and, yeah. frankly, to play flag football yeah. when you're in like fourth or fifth grade. Yeah. Because if you're a lineman, you you, you really don't do much. Um, and when you're in fourth or fifth grade, you may eventually be a lineman. You may be a big guy, but you know you want to go catch passes and do things like that. And and yeah. So I I love that kind of football. Yeah, I do too. Um, thank you for sitting down. I'm glad oh, you're, you're welcome. always in the room when we talk to these high school athletes. So I'm excited to talk to you personally. Well, I appreciate time. you having me here. Thanks a lot.